United States, uh, we've seen a very sharp increase in the inequality of income. Uh, this probably dates back from the uh, mid-1970s. Uh, before that, there was actually a fairly steep decline in income inequality from about uh, 1929, which is when the Great Depression started, through World War II, and then income inequality leveled off uh, during the 1950s, 1960s, through the mid-1970s, and then it's uh, been steadily increasing since then. Uh, wealth inequality uh, started out with a very similar pattern. It uh, started out um, uh, with the big decline again beginning in 1929 with the Great Depression and, uh, and wealth inequality uh, flattened out in the 1960s and 1970s and uh, increased a lot um, through about uh, 1990. But uh, the difference now is that wealth inequality has been pretty flat since about 1990 in the United States, whereas income inequality has continued to rise been one of the factors why income inequality has continued to rise. Uh, there's particularly uh, stock prices have increased and as people sell stock um, they get what are called realized capital gains and this is counted as part of income so one, one factor in the rising income inequality is rising uh, asset prices. Uh, but uh, for wealth it's interesting uh, What's offset that is the fact that housing prices have gone up. And when you look at uh, wealth, which is the sum of uh, assets that people own, uh, houses are the main asset of the middle class. So because housing prices have increased uh, pretty dramatically since about 1990, at least through 2007, uh, the wealth of the middle class has also gone up. And this is why wealth inequality has remained pretty flat. It's because the wealth of the middle class has increased, and this is due to rising housing prices. The boom in housing prices uh, up until 2007 has uh, been a very moderating factor in terms of wealth inequality. But uh, as in Spain, uh, the United States has experienced a uh, big drop in housing prices. Uh, this has been a housing crisis in the United States, uh, just like in Spain. And so what this means is that the uh, wealth of the middle class has gone down pretty dramatically over the last two or three years. Now, stock prices, which is the main asset of the rich, uh, fell very sharply until about the uh, middle of 2008. And so for a while, the wealth of the rich also went down, but uh, stock prices have recovered. And in fact, uh, today they're just about where they were in 2007. So while the uh, wealth of the rich has now recovered, the wealth of the middle class has not. And so we've uh, had a big increase in wealth inequality in the United States. The uh, main difference is in terms of the level of inequality. Um, one of these, this is the wealth survey I use, which is called the Survey of Consumer Finances, has a special supplement uh, of just of rich people. And this is actually similar to the Spanish wealth survey. They oversample the rich, and as a result, you get much better data on both the wealth and income of the high end of the distribution. So when you look at the level of inequality, if you use uh, the survey of consumer finances, uh, you get a much higher share of the top groups than if you use our normal survey, which is the current population survey, which is a representative sample of the population. So with the current population survey, which uh, has been going on now since 1947 in the United States, uh, for example, the share of the top 1% uh, is uh, only about 8 or 9% from the current population survey. But from the survey of consumer finances, it's close to 20%. So there's a big difference in the level of inequality. The more you sample the rich, 
the higher the measured inequality. Uh, actually, if you use tax data in the United States, just like in Spain, you also find a much higher share of the top groups. So uh, the more you know about the rich, uh, the, the higher the measured inequality. Uh, and this is true in the United States and in Spain, but the trends are pretty similar. So whereas you find rising inequality, income inequality based on the current population survey, you also find rising income inequality based on the survey of consumer finances and also based on tax data, which is, uh, you know, based on actual tax returns filed by uh, Americans. Uh, there have been a couple of uh, studies which have tried to pull together data from individual countries on income distribution and then tie them all together to create the overall world distribution of income. And uh, you find very high world income inequality, uh, whereas um, in most Western European countries, um, we have uh, the standard measure of income inequality is the Gini coefficient. We find a Gini coefficient of about uh, 0.35 or so. If you look at the world distribution of income, the overall Gini coefficient is more like uh, 0.75. So, you know, the, from the world, the world perspective, we have much greater income inequality than looking at individual countries. Uh, so when you look at changes over time, you really have two effects. You have the fact that the rich countries, Western Europe, United States, uh, Japan, Australia, the OECD countries, uh, they've been pulling away from uh, middle income countries and less developed countries. And so this has widened the gap in income between the high income countries and the middle and low income countries. So that's been a factor that has led to rising world income inequality. But this has been offset to a large extent by China. Because China started out with very low incomes and uh, as we know over the last 15, 20 years has gone through incredible growth and so their income levels have increased pushing them up to a middle income country standard. And this has uh, uh, tended to lower world income inequality. And now we have India going through the same process, which started out at an even lower level than China and is now going through uh, a, a, a dramatic growth period. So you have these two offsetting effects. Uh, but on that, it seems like uh, even despite China's enormous growth, we're still experiencing rising world income inequality. This, this is from about uh, 1980 through about 2005. Spain has uh, falls very much into the pattern of Western Europe, uh, whereas the uh, United States and the other Anglo-Saxon countries have experienced rising income inequality since uh, 1975-1980. In uh, Spain, it's been it's been pretty flat, as in most of Western Europe, France, Germany. So income inequality has not really risen very much in Spain, and this is much puts it uh, very much in line with uh, the rest of Western Europe, and in contrast with the Anglo-Saxon countries like the United States, where income inequality has risen quite dramatically, actually. The middle class in the United States, and I think it's probably true in um, Spain and other Western European countries, uh, has gone through very bad times over the last decade. Um, this is uh, mainly reflected in incomes. Uh, in the United States, um, the median family income, that is the income of the middle class, has actually fallen between 2000 and 2010. This is the first decade in American history where average family incomes have actually gone down. And it's gone down by about 5%. So the middle class has gotten hurt. This is partly a result of uh, the fact that uh, wages have been stagnant in the United States now for about 30 years. 
Uh, but it's also due to rising income inequality because most of the income gains have gone to the very rich. So the middle class has seen their incomes declined and their wealth, as, as I just uh, mentioned, has also gone through a precipitous, very steep decline. Uh, I compute that the wealth of the middle class has dropped by about 30% between 2007 and 2010. And this is due mainly to the uh, collapse in housing prices. And so the wealth position of the middle class has gone through, uh, a, has gone down very dramatically. And uh, partly as a result, a lot of families find, middle class families find that uh, their homes are now worth less than their outstanding mortgage loans. This is what we call underwater. A lot of, about uh, close to 20% of middle class homeowners now have negative home equity. Their mortgage, their mortgage debt is greater than the value of their homes. A lot of these families uh, are unable to uh, repay their mortgage debt. Uh, a lot of them are walking away from their homes because they have negative home equity. Uh, as a result, um, a lot of families have uh, either lost their homes or are walking away from their homes. A lot of these homes are being repossessed by banks. Middle class has really gotten squeezed over the last decade or so.